a horrendous bombing had occurred in the lower class regions of Colombia. The perpetrators of this crime, a ruthless guerrilla group called FARC, were the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia. This heinous crime shocked the community because FARC originally prided themselves by promoting peace and economic inequality to contrast Colombia's current government. But what happened to that original goal? How did it become so twisted in corruption and drugs? Find out now in The Love of Money, FARC. During the 1940s in Colombia, a period of extreme violence broke out and more than 200,000 lives were lost, as well as displacing more than 1 million people during this conflict. This period was named La Valencia. The violence was sparked as a political feud between Colombia's two main parties, the Liberals and the Conservatives. Under the rule of Mariano Ospina Perez and his predominantly conservative party regime, he used the Colombian police and army to subdue the Liberal Party. In response, the Liberal Party quickly started to form a peasant army to combat the opposition. As the fighting between the two groups slowly faded, they decided to collectively sign a coalition called the National Front. The National Front was a document that stated that after every four political terms, each party would rotate power. This sparked extreme outrage with those who felt disenfranchised by the National Front because of the lack of outer party representation within the government. As mentioned before, the peasant army created by the Liberals during La Valencia quickly switched allegiance to be with the misrepresented parties of Colombia. As the peasant army grew in size and numbers, it came to be known as FARC, or the Fuerzas Armadas Revolucionarias de Colombia, or Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia. The group was officially formed by Pedro Antonio Marín, also known as Manuel Marudala Veliz. Marín grew up inside the underrepresented, poverty-ridden countryside of western central Colombia in the Coindo district. As FARC grew in power, Marín quickly established the group as a Marxist-Leninist paramilitary group that followed its ideologies closely with leftist socialist movements from around the world. During the 1960s, FARC established its original goals, being bringing power to the underrepresented, opposing multinational corporations, and purging the government of corrupt officials. With these goals set in mind, FARC quickly dominated guerrilla territory and became a strong political and economic influence in Colombia. The reason for FARC's opposition to the government was Colombians' rampant corruption throughout its government. Since the early 1900s, Colombia's government has been filled with a cycle of illegal activities and corruption. For instance, in the 1980s, Colombian elections were so corrupt that there were no liberal legislators in the National Congress, and the only one in the Senate was Rafael Urbre. The candidates manufactured these results through ballot stuffing. To perform ballot stuffing, candidates and their affiliates would pay citizens to add extra votes towards themselves and their party. Ballot stuffing was especially rampant in the Colombian government throughout the 1940s through 1960s. During that time period, some elections even surpassed 100% approval by the boosted candidate. Another example of Colombia's unscrupulous electoral system was when Ernesto Semper came to power. He won with the help of a Colombian Cali drug cartel, who also helped elect the conservative candidate Andres Pastera to win in 1998. FARC wanted to combat this corrupted government and reverse its immoral deeds. So they decided to go into a 58-year war with the Colombian government. During this war, they found themselves looking for sources of income to supply food and weaponry toward their guerrilla army. At first, FARC looked for legal ways to support itself, but soon found that those methods were insufficient for their needs. This led to FARC's connection with the Colombian drug production market. FARC found that illegal drug production provided more than enough steady income to be able to support an ever-growing army. Because of this, FARC increased Colombian coca production by more than 22% in rural areas. 
Also, according to the DEA Drug Intelligence Report, FARC became a leading supplier of cocaine, providing more than 74% of the world's supply. As FARC started to lean on drugs for its monetary income, they sought more and more land in order to produce the drugs. Rural towns in Colombia, such as Guadalajara, Putumayo, and Gateta, that are unable to grow sufficient traditional crops, soon sold over their land for illegal drug production. The low cost of illegal drug production relative to the payoff enticed many rural farmers. FARC's insistence in illegal drug production has also had a negative impact on the safety of civilian life in the region. Violence caused by the drug trade has been extensive. Just in 2002 alone, 373,020 people were displaced, 2,986 were kidnapped, and 500 plus people were simply disappeared. FARC utilized many military techniques to fight, such as IEDs. IEDs, or improvised explosive devices, were planted along almost anywhere that opposing military units could pass. The bombs were indiscriminate, and they exploded on people of every race, religion, age, and political affiliation on a regular basis. The result of these bombs are seen in the streets of Colombia, where many citizens brandish artificial limbs to replace their mangled body parts. Even to this day, Colombia is plagued with hidden IEDs scattered throughout the country. As FARC grew from a peasant army into what they have become today, they have left thousands of families separated and millions displaced. FARC lost sight of their original goals of a utopian unified Colombia, free from corruption and violence. They have become everything they were so desperately fighting against. Just like the Colombian government, the love of money caused FARC to become corrupt.